Hello Eurovision fans, thank you so much for coming to my channel Eurovision Histories. It is now 33 weeks to the final of Eurovision 2024 and I have another update for you. There are changes in Denmark, there's possibly some trouble in Ireland. We're going to talk about the Cypriot artist Celia Capsis, Eurovision fever in Luxembourg and also Loreen possibly returning for a third time and that's what I want to start with. Loreen is currently on her European tour which is going amazingly well I think. She's currently in Spain and she talked to Spanish national broadcaster RTVE and they asked her whether she would be coming back for a third time and try to break all of the records possible and win for a third time for Sweden. And here's what she said, quite surprisingly to me. If I am honest with you, I don't know because I thought I knew a year ago and obviously I did not. So apparently a year ago she didn't want to come back for a second time. Then she got a good song and the motivation to do it and she did and then she continues saying if my head had decided I would not have experienced all of these marvelous things so I don't know. So there is a bit of a possibility that Loreen might try to represent Sweden again maybe participate in Melody Festival and again she would have to win that which is not that easy and she also says that she might be kicking and streaming if they ask her again but in the end she cannot give a definitive answer because she just doesn't know. I feel like she's the kind of person that decides more based on feeling than on logic. And so we will see whether she will be back in Eurovision 2034 or something. Now I'm a bit conflicted about this because obviously I love Loreen. She is officially now I think the queen of Eurovision. I love both of her songs. Tattoo has kind of become my favorite of this year almost eclipsing Due Vita and Euphoria obviously is a big classic and she is just a great person as well. I just think that at some point you might have to give the spotlight to younger artists, people that are starting out and need the publicity that Eurovision brings you. So if she actually does come back for a third time, I might be a bit conflicted about it all. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Do you want to see her come back for a third time? Now, next up, I have some news from Ireland. There seems to be a bit of trouble in Ireland. They had their submission window for songs for their national final, which was supposed to end at the end of September. And now they have extended it to the 20th of October. So it's not just a week or something. It's quite a long time, which might be a sign of some trouble because why would you extend it by that much if you already have a lot of songs submitted that you think are good enough to represent your country at Eurovision. As you know, Ireland has had a lot of trouble in recent years. They have seven wins, just like Sweden. Um, but in the last couple of years, they have only managed to qualify for the final one single time since 2014, which is not a good record at all. They haven't really changed the selection method that much. And this whole extension of the window doesn't look very promising to me, unfortunately. There are some news about TikTokers and other artists um, submitting songs to the national final. So th they might have extended the window thinking positively because they wanted to give these people a bit more time to find the right song. But it being Ireland, I just think it might just be a sign of trouble, unfortunately. I'm wishing them the best of luck. I really want to see Ireland in the top 10 again or doing well because I think at some point the public will just lose interest in Eurovision if they don't do a bit better. Then we have a new artist for Eurovision 2024. It's the second artist that is confirmed. Celia Capsis will be representing Cyprus. I talked about this two videos ago that this was the big rumor that she would be the Cypriot representative and it has been confirmed. She is 16 years old. She has lived all her life and has started her career in Australia. So she's kind of the female Andrew Lambrou in a way, but she has Greek and Cypriot heritage. And I guess that's why the Cypriot national broadcaster thought of her to represent the country. I said in my last video, in two videos ago, when I talked about the rumor that I wouldn't have a big problem with her representing Cyprus, I just think that 16 years old is a bit too young for Eurovision. We saw it with the Greek representative this year who visibly struggled a bit with the pressure that was on him. You're just 16, you're on that giant stage representing a country. So I'm not 
sure whether choosing a 16 year old is the right way to go i do think that she has a lot more experience than he had with performing and so on but still i think 16 is just very very young i also looked at her songs again there are three songs of hers on spotify it's kind of in the disco lane which might be good for eurovision but i also found them a bit standard to be honest so i hope for the eurovision entry they find something a bit more interesting that stands out a bit more dimitris Topoulos from the Dream Team will be composing the entry. This has also been confirmed, which doesn't fill me with a lot of excitement because the Dream Team is not really a Dream Team for me. Usually I don't like their entries that much. Like Stefania, for example, I it was successful. It was a top 10 entry, but I just didn't really connect to it. So I kind of hope that the song for Cyprus will be a bit different because I just feel like the Stefania song Last Dance, the staging was a bit dated, the song felt a bit dated. Obviously, it was successful, so I can't say a lot about that. But personally, I like different kinds of songs. So I have uh, thought of something new, which is the Excitimeter with the artists that have been announced. And I have to say that I'm way more excited about Musti for Belgium than I am about Celia Capsis with all of the information we have, the dream team and so on. And so she is my second most exciting artist for Eurovision 2024. I will be adding new artists, obviously, as they get announced to my excitimeter. I hope you like the idea. Now, next up, we have Luxembourg is in Eurovision fever. I just love this. And this is also kind of my website or social media tip of this week. It is Eurovision Luxembourg on X, formerly Twitter. They have posted, look at this, a little peek behind the scenes at RTL Luxembourg in our freshly redecorated office where head of Eurovision is hard at work. Great things are in the making, stay tuned. I really love this uh, X account at RTL Eurovision. You really feel the passion that they have, the excitement of joining the Eurovision family. And look at this, they have a sign on the door. They have a really cool uh, decorated office, even though this is 2023, you should soon change that to 2024 Luxembourg. And they even have a roll up with the former winners and cool decorations and i just it you just it oozes the excitement that eurovision needs so i'm expecting great things from luxembourg actually and i hope that they will have the success that this excitement that they're showing does deserve so follow them on x i really really can recommend that then we have some news from Sweden in a way. Carolina Noren is the radio commentator for the Swedish national broadcaster of Eurovision. And she was on the Eurotrip podcast, another recommendation. Um, if you like podcasts and Eurovision, check that out. And she said that she interviewed Martin Österdahl, the executive supervisor of the EBU, and that she told him that the big five should be abolished because it's not unfair and that they should be um, competing in the semifinals and that just the winner should be pre-qualified for the final. Now I have a whole video on why the Big Five exist, why they have to exist. So I'm not going to go into too much detail, but the argument is clear. Of course, it's not fair that five countries always get to qualify for the final, no matter what bad songs they send. And unfortunately, the Big Five have had a bit of a history of sending bad songs. It has gotten much better in the last couple of years. But the fact of the matter is that we need the Big Five to finance the show, to finance Eurovision. And if one of them withdraws, it will get way more expensive for all of the other countries, especially the smaller countries who then might have to withdraw because they cannot um, spend more of their budget on Eurovision. So it's just an argument that seems to be emotionally based and not factually based. I recommend to her to watch my video on this and maybe she might change her opinion. Again, I know it's not fair, but it is a necessary evil in a way. Then we have some news from BNG, the Bulgarian national broadcaster, their Eurovision account on Twitter, or an X as it's now called, is the gift that keeps on giving. Last week I talked about a post where they said that Bulgaria does not participate in this contest 
anymore, which seemed like a very definitive non-return. And now they have posted something else and they have kind of changed their tune a little bit, saying at this point, there's no information about any change of current status. Therefore, it's quite unlikely that a return to the contest could be viable option for 2024. However, that may change in the future, provided variety of factors align. So they're not saying anymore, we're not participating in this contest. They say currently it is quite unlikely, which is not a non-return. And it doesn't mean that in the next couple of years, Bulgaria might not return. I'm not sure that it will happen this year because obviously they haven't made up their mind yet and the submission period ended a few weeks ago but at least we have the chance of bulgaria possibly coming back at some point to our beloved contest and then we have here the confirmations for eurovision 2024 not much has changed since the last video we unfortunately don't have new information on the romanian possible withdrawal we don't know whether australia will be participating and another country that we haven't heard anything from is armenia with everything going on in the country and in the region um, there is a bit of doubt about them participating next year. There is also a bit of doubt about the already confirmed participation in Junior Eurovision. So we will be looking at that as well to see whether we can have Armenia back at Eurovision 2024. Then some changes have been announced in Denmark for their Dansk Melody Grand Prix, their national final. Denmark is another country like Ireland, like Germany, that has had a lot of trouble in recent years. They have not qualified for the final on three consecutive occasions so they are changing their tune a bit and their national final a bit one thing that they said they will do is look at the songs that were successful in the last couple of eurovisions which genres which types of songs do well and have that in mind when selecting the songs for the national final this is always something that fills me with a bit of anxiety because if you look at how well a song might do at Eurovision, you might be making the wrong choice because sometimes if you choose the song that seems the least Eurovision-y, it will be the song that stands out the most, that gets the most points and is the most successful. I do like that they look at the last couple of years and at the genres that do well. We had a rock song in Italian winning. We had a song with traditional elements in Ukrainian win. So there might be, we had a great song from Finland this year, completely in Finnish. So there might be a bit more variety in the Danish national final, which had a lot of mainstream pop songs in the past. But there's also the potential of them overlooking a song that is just too left field because it isn't Eurovision-y enough. So I'm kind of hoping that they will go with the first lane. They have also said that they will extend the jury. Quite surprisingly, in the last couple of years, there were just five jury members that decided together with the public who would go to Eurovision. Now they will increase this number and they will also have international jury members. And they say that they will invite Eurovision experts and international music experts. Now Eurovision experts sounds like fans that run fan sites like me. And I'm not 100% sure whether that's the right way to go because then again, something a bit too Eurovision-y might be chosen, but Maybe that's just me. Let me know what you think of the changes in the comments. Next up, we have some renewed information about the plan to cut the final by one hour. There seems to be still a lot of buzz about this. I read a few rumors from people close to the producers that the plan continues to be to cut the Eurovision final from four hours to three hours. I've seen a few plans how to do that, especially cutting the interval acts a bit, maybe cutting the flag parade. But overall, I have to say, it does run long, but it's something that we wait for an entire year and then only having three hours instead of four doesn't seem like a great thing for the fans. But if I think about the general public, I mean, if you watch it with, fan with friends of yours that aren't Eurovision fans, the sentence, this is very long, gets 
uttered quite a lot. So for the viability as a TV show and as a successful TV show, it might actually be a good idea to shorten it. I think three hours is not long enough, but cutting a few of the unnecessary bits, especially in the interval period, might not be the worst idea. Then I have my song tip for the week, which is our winners from 2021, Moneskin. Their new song is called Honey, Are You Coming? Quite tongue in cheek and a bit of a double meaning, even though I don't know whether it's actually a double meaning or just the first meaning. <laughs> Anyway, um, I really like this song because it is kind of classic Moneskin. I was not that convinced by some of their latest singles and by their last album. There are a lot of good songs on there, but it wasn't Moneskin as I fell in love with them. But this song I really, really like and I recommend you checking it out. I do hope that they will publish more songs in Italian at some point because that's also why I kind of fell in love with this great band. And now I have my regular chart update for Eurovision 2023. We have one song that is doing incredibly well in France, and that is Tattoo. You can see here Le Snap, the official French uh, chart company, saying that Tattoo has been certified platinum for 30 million equivalent streams in France, which is an amazing success. I think she will be going there soon to promote the song even more. So maybe she can get a platinum certification as well. I think Arcade and Snap already have that. So you can see platinum in France, but Tattoo has also been certified platinum in Portugal. And Cha 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 by Carrie has been certified gold in Poland as well. So great success all around. This is my update for this week. Please subscribe to my channel if you liked it and if you don't want to miss any more news updates. There will also be more videos on Eurovision 2024 coming up and I'm working on the video on Eurovision 1967. A lot of you have asked already. I'm cutting and editing. It's not that easy to do, but I hope that I can publish it quite soon. So please subscribe and then I might see you for my next video if you want to. Bye bye.